talk to anyone who's not a Palestinian who has done advocacy for Palestinians and they will always consistently say it is wild how open-minded Palestinians are in general across the board in spite of all of the harm that they have experienced in spite of all of the violence that they've been subjected to I think it's fair to characterize Gaza as a concentration camp. And I am the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors. My uncle was a child in the camps and my entire family on my mother's side was murdered. Yeah, when the, the funny part about this is that whenever people try to do this for Norm, he's like, well, so was my parents. Like, what are you talking about? By the Nazis. Um, I, I don't think those are, they're, they're not the same thing. I, I'm not saying that Gaza is, um, you know, a, a, a fun place by any stretch of the imagination necessarily, but I don't think that characterizing it as a concentration camp is fair. Um, and then also your point- Would you like me to respond to that sure. first, then you'll go to second. Sure. Okay. And you can cut this out uh, if you want. No, no. No, no you're part run. of the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Finkel. So, Baruch Kimmerling was a senior. You want to know what I, you want to know what really frustrates me before we get into this, okay? The consistency in which I have literally fucking talked about how the Azov Battalion and nationalist forces within Ukraine were going to rise to power and prominence as the emancipatory forces once Russia invaded. And all of that was going to be in the hands of Russia. Russia would be responsible for it. And I said this time and time again. I said this, I tweeted it. It's impossible for you to not see that I, I have this perspective. I've had this perspective since day one of the fucking invasion. I said it over and over again because I understand that when your country is invaded, you have no other option but to rely on anyone and everyone that is going to defend the country from the occupation okay congrats you were right question mark no it's important it's important to understand because so many motherfuckers still to this day lie about this okay they lie about this over and over again i called for a ceasefire over and over again i called for the minsk agreements to be revitalized over and over again i talked about the 15 point peace plan that was cast aside People shit on me every step of the fucking way. And look what has happened now. Look what has fucking happened now. This isn't me gloating. This is me angry. Because thousands, tens of thousands of Ukrainians have fucking died. Okay? In the time frame, a year ago, where there could have been better conditions for a fucking deal, a possible deal, if America wasn't interested in dumping their munitions into Ukraine... And just like making a tidy profit, there could have been better fucking, uh, there could have been a better deal. There could have been a better deal every step of the fucking way. They don't want to think about what this means. So they turn around and say, oh, you must actually secretly uh, oppose. Uh, you must actually just secretly love the other side and, and think that what they're saying is correct. And you're too cowardly to admit it. Here, instead of being able to fucking, I'm just going to do my uh, very best to comb through your words and, and, you know, comb through your words and say that you're, you actually mean something else and propagandize against this fucking, uh, propagandize against you for two fucking years. U.S. President Joe Biden indicates progress on securing a humanitarian pause in between fighting Israel and Hamas, replying yes and giving a thumbs up that they said that there's headway on the issue. A sociologist at the Hebrew University in, in Jerusalem, and he was highly respected. He's since passed from the scene prematurely. If you look at his book, Politicide, I'll spell it for your listeners, P-O-L-I-T-I-C-I-D-E. Hopefully our listeners can spell that themselves. <laughs> yeah, because he coined the term. That's why I'm spelling it for your listeners. He described Gaza's, quote, the largest concentration camp ever That was in the world. That's his expression. Okay. Okay. Number two, he wrote that in 2003, okay, before the blockade and before Israel's repeated operations, mowings of the law, 
lawn in Gaza. I don't like that phrase, but okay. Yeah. It's a revolting phrase. Yes. And doesn't that, isn't that something that should give one pause? That that's yeah, it's a revolting phrase. You don't like that phrase because it reminds people too much of a, another modern uh, genocide, Rwanda. That's the reason why you don't like the phrase. It's not a phrase that like, it's a phrase that the Israelis used. Just like in Rwanda, the phrase was cutting the tall trees. Phrase is constantly repeated. We're mowing the lawn in Gaza. Can you imagine the you phrases realize, that Gaza uses you, you about you what realize, they've done? Do you realize one million of those blades are children? Okay, I have never heard okay. anyone, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of Israelis... Mm -hmm. Hamas is using, sorry, go ahead. ...ever use that expression. I don't mm -hmm. know anybody who takes any pleasure in killing children. Oh. Um, Damn, she must not know any uh, Israeli... Uh, Knesset members, I think. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Hmm, let's take a look. <clears throat> Fuck! I hate paywalls so much. With strikes targeting rockets and tunnels with Israeli tactic of mowing the grass returns to Gaza. For more than a decade, when analysts describe the strategy utilized by Israel against Palestinian militants in the Gaza Strip, they've used the metaphor. With their displays of overwhelming military strength, Israeli forces were mowing the grass but while many liberals suggest a new effort to find peace through negotiations of what's needed some conservatives say that only military action will resolve the situation just like mowing your front lawn this is constant hard work david m weinberger the jerusalem institute for strategy and security wrote for the jerusalem post this week if you fail to do so weeds grow wild and snakes begin to slither around in the bush and i i don't know that that's the standard but we know the hamas massacre us you got to talk in the mic. Pleasure. Here, Perel, you can say, come see we know, we know that the Hamas took great pleasure in killing children. Okay, but I'm not, yes, we do. But I'm not talking about that uh -huh. now. I'm talking about the, the Israelis. So I, I don't want to use that phrase as a standard because I think it's repugnant um, on both sides. Um, so that, that's one thing. And then you take... I love that there's two different Zionisms here. Soft liberal, uh, liberal soft Zionism from her a little bit, I think. And then hardliner ultra Zionism from the dude who's like, oh, Hamas, immediately. Take, you know, these words like ethnic cleansing and genocide. Um, but I haven't heard you say anything about the horrors of what comes out of Hamas's mouth or these... Um, did the must take pleasure in killing children? Fact check it. What, what difference does it make, dude? What do you mean? It's just like, it's another way to reinforce the, the narrative that like, they're animals, they're animals, they're animals, okay? Like, that's it. Like, w w what the fuck? Maybe, maybe it's naive to say that some other people who perhaps are not Hamas apologists or sympathizers who are um, fr from the river to the sea, which calls for the very explicit um, genocide of literally wiping <laughs> israel off the map and jews across the world yeah okay soft zionism versus hard zionism she's soft okay i know we're going to be pressed for time and you obviously are uh committed to the subject enough that you sat down at the table and you want to ask me questions and I respect that, okay? I had a very close friend in Israel. She was like a high school sweetheart. And I was also close with her daughter. And her daughter is the deputy editor of Haaretz. Uh, Tamar Zweigrath, or maybe, yeah, Zweigrath. And on October, she started to hear some of the statements I made. And she was very angry at me. And she said, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore, and you've lost your moral bearings. And actually, just a week ago, because she was a decent person, I know that. Just a <laughs> week said ago, was. Um, when I went to Grand Central Station, and I saw those thousand Jews inside the station, and about 2,000 more outside, the station. I was outside because, silly reason, I don't own a cell phone, 
and they, and they didn't announce where the demonstration would be until 6 p.m. You had to have a cell phone. So I was stuck at home waiting for my friends to tell me. So I was one of the 2,000 outside. And it was one of the, for me, maybe my chauvinism comes out a little. It was such a proud moment, such a magnificent moment, seeing 1,000 young Jews inside Grand Central Station wearing ceasefire now on the front of the T-shirt and not in my name on the, alt on the back side of the T-shirt. Uh, it was thrilling. And I wanted... You know, I was fucking complaining about, like, how right I was about Ukraine and how fucking wrong everyone was and how they fucking bullied me nonstop earlier. Imagine that times one million. I feel embarrassed to even like bring it up in a similar perspective. I'm just trying to get you to comprehend what has happened to this man for multiple decades for his unflinching defense of Palestinians. I'm not making it about me at all. Shut the fuck up. I'm saying... That's nothing. Like, I'm saying people yelling at me is nothing. It's like a fucking crumb in comparison to in comparison to what has happened to Norm Ficklestein his entire fucking life, okay? Yes, I know what he said about trans people. I don't give a shit. We're not talking about this 900-year-old man's uh, opinions about, like, uh, modern social movements right now. You don't have to immediately talk about that. You don't have to immediately jump to this. I hate this. Stop. It's like every time I disagree with Noam Chomsky on a multitude of different issues, it doesn't matter. When I bring up Noam Chomsky, you don't have to immediately come in here and be like, well, remember what he said about Khmer Rouge? Like that is, unless you are literally a State Department operative, there is no reason for you to do that. Deflecting L? No, I'm not deflecting. Oh, you're saying that they're deflecting. Okay especially when no similar standards of purity are applied to those who just fucking lap up whatever the fuck the State Department is saying. Okay, his greatest interlocutor, his enemy, is Alan Dershowitz. Do we think Alan Dershowitz is good? Do you think those who are on Alan Dershowitz side go, hey, dog, maybe you shouldn't have fucking been besties with Jeffrey Epstein. No, Alan Dershowitz gets to go on Fox News every fucking night. Doesn't that make you think twice about the situation a little bit? The Dersh. Incoming, does Hassan not care about transgender issues? Yeah, I know. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. I'm not talking about that. I've criticized him on that many times, okay? I've criticized him on that since I found his perspective to be, I think, a little uh, way too overboard, in my opinion. But I don't care because that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about his lives work and how we got fucking blacklisted across the board and how he is vindicated in this moment. To send a picture of that to Tamar and write, I guess it's not just me who's lost his moral bearings. That's not what I'm asking. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So now let me get to your question. Uh, my parents were very decent people. They were hardworking. My mother was very educated. She went to Warsaw University, studied mathematics, but that was terminated by the war. That was 1937, okay? Having said that, I once asked my mother, just out of curiosity, so mom, what did you think about the terror bombing of Germany during World War II? They were engaged in terror bombing uh, to kill German civilians in order to get them to rise up. That was the hope, it didn't work, but to get them to rise up against the Germans. Okay, the estimates are as many as 800,000 German civilians were killed in the terror bombing. And she just turned to me and very flatly said, It's funny to use the least defensible part of the most defensible war when trying to draw comparisons and, and act like what Israel is doing is appropriate. Like, like we built a whole... Rules of engagement, dog. We built, like, an entirely new way of doing global conflict after. For that fucking reason! It's so nuts! Sorry. Our feeling was, if we're going to die, we're going to take some of them with us. She didn't discriminate 
between civilians and combatants, because we were talking about the terror bombing directed at civilians. If we're going to die, we're going to take some of them with us. It was impossible, impossible in my home growing up to say any good word about a German <laughs> or a Pole. But my parents were from Poland or a Pole. Now with Poles, it was more contempt. You know, the Jews had a contempt for Poles. My mother would say, stupid Poles, stupid Pole. Uh, <laughs> But Germans, it was a raging <laughs> hatred awesome. to the last day of their life, you know? And they were very decent people. Once I brought to my home a friend, Cyrus Wieser, who was half German and half Armenian. It was the first time I ever brought anyone of any German extraction to my home. And my mother wanted to rise to the occasion. And she took him aside at the end and just whispered, it's okay that you came. That was the furthest she would go. <laughs> now, if you asked Sorry. what she felt in 1945, because I'm talking about 40 years later, it wouldn't have been okay. This is important to understand, obviously, he's because that's the, that's the, Okay, whatever. I'll just let him do it. So for me... I'll just let him do it. It's important to understand that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Okay? That's what his mom did not understand. Don't bring up light bulbs opposed to a very touchy subject. Okay. Listen. Listen. If you if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here is the three-minute ad break now. I'm eating a salad and chicken. It's expecting something superhuman of the people of Gaza to make anything less than the kind of homicidal statements that my own mother said, if we're going to die, we're going to take some of them with us. I have visited Gaza, not extensively, not extensively, but I have been there. And, you know, for whatever reason, I was treated decently. I lived in the West Bank. I lived in... If you know, the West, you know the West Bank? Okay, I lived in Beit Sahur, the Christian Palestinian village outside Bethlehem. And I lived in uh, Hebron, right across the street from Fawar camp, Fawar refugee camp. I went back every year from 1988 to 1993. Do I walk away with a memory? And I didn't meet Hamas people, because Hamas was already around back then. Do I walk away with a memory of homicidal fascist maniacs wanting to kill me? If I did, I would say it. And people have accused me of many things, but lying is not one of them. You know? <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, to a and fault. I also, errors in my footnotes is not one of them. You can accuse me falsely of selectivity. You can't accuse me of misrepresentation. I have a, so that's my answer. You're asking for something which to my thinking is superhuman, that they feel about the Jews having been locked up in that concentration camp for 20 years, what my parents felt for the Germans. It's, okay, wait, so, wait, wait. So, uh, important to understand here. He's saying in the Holocaust comparison, the Israeli forces are the Nazis. Like that's what, from the perspective of the Palestinian, he's saying the Israeli forces are the Nazis. I'll take it one step further, however. While Norm makes this, uh, while Norm says this, the reality is, in my opinion at least, incredibly, incredibly more moderate, which I will never understand. Talk to anyone who's not a Palestinian, who has done advocacy for Palestinians over the course of many, many years, and they will always consistently say, it is wild how open-minded Palestinians are in general across the board in spite of all of the harm that they have experienced in spite of all of the all of the violence that they've been subjected to it's it's they're so fucking kind dude I'm not saying this like to to hype up anybody anything like it is shocking it is shocking in spite of all of the wrongdoing it takes a superhuman 
to to look at that situation and go, it's okay. We just want like we just want equality. We just want we don't want vengeance. We don't want revenge. We just want equality. Okay, for seventy five fucking years, that has been the most consistent through line through Palestinian liberation. The most vocal parts of Palestinian liberation have always been emancipatory and has always pushed for liberation for the Palestinians to be able to just simply live on their own fucking lands. And it's gross and disgusting that their oppressors have regularly bastardized, have regularly pushed more and more people to more violent means of retaliation, showing them that there is no conciliation, there is no conciliatory uh, emancipation coming from the oppressive side. That's why I believe that a one state solution and its greatest, uh, its, its greatest opponents won't be the Palestinians. Think about it. I showed you the 2017 Palestinian poll showing 52%, 52% of Palestinians in 2017 still believed in a two state solution. That is, is almost stupid at that point. It's like not even, like you're, you're delusional at that point. Think about that. The fact that 53% of Israelis and 52% of Palestinians believe in a two-state solution at that point means that they are literally not even like understandable, normal levels of like human empathy, okay? They've gone far above and beyond after being crushed for 75 fucking years. It's crazy. Now, of course, yes, there is another reason. It's because, uh, you know, half of the Palestinians in Gaza, at least, are fucking children. So there is that, too. And it is definitely, uh, you know, children are optimistic and innocent for the most part until the Israeli occupation turns them into victims and then also some who uh, choose to take matters into their own hands. Miss Susie B, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. And Psychedelic Gazelle, thank you for the 5 gifted subs. Enough, that- enough, enough. We have to, we have to, do you, do you want to say anything? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, we, 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 I'm going to hold my tongue. Cut it out. I was going to say something. Let I'm going to hold my tongue. No, no, s- it. say it and finish. I would accuse you of selectivity and I hope when we, when we meet again that I can, mm-hmm. I can try to. Fine, go through it. my book and I show it. I, I have, I, I made a whole thing, but I, I thought it was in a, because I'm supposed to be like, I mean, third, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I'm, impartial. I didn't want to. I would just I, tell the listeners, but, um, the viewers. I would like to spar with you that on that. This entire conversation. Yeah. We have seen Mr. Finkelstein analogize the conditions of Gaza to a concentration camp. Yes, he has an Israeli sociologist who said it too. It is a free and open society in Israel. So yes, you will find such people who will say these sorts of things. Can I say something? I don't know if this is inappropriate, but I think about this quite a lot. I've often wondered why Israel weirdly to a fault, in spite of being a fascist state, would allow Israelis to say whatever the fuck they want. Israeli academics, Israeli politicians at times, well, obviously they've been executed in the past, assassinated. But I have always thought, in my mind, one, partially because they're, they're uh, completely powerless, but I think it also is because of the, the similar, the, the aspect of Jewish supremacy that comes from within the maintenance of this apartheid regime. I think it's because if you, the, the, the notion is like, if you're a Palestinian, if you're a Palestinian citizen of Israel, they will fucking throw you in jail. Not even a question. But if you're Jewish in Israel and you say the exact same thing that the Palestinian citizen of Israel is saying, then you're allowed. You are allowed. And I think... I think it is quite literally, I think it is quite literally simultaneously because like it's an open, free, fair democracy. That's what we want to present it as. But I also think it's because it, it I think it revolves around a, a supremacist attitude that like, yeah, we hate this guy. We hate our own that says things that like benefit our enemy. But ultimately, he's still, he's still Jewish. And if you have like, um, if you have this perspective, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I might totally be wrong. I know there's some uh, Israelis in here that maybe will be able to give me a, a, a better perspective on this. But I feel like it is almost like, I feel like it's almost supremacist, because like the way that the mistreatment, the way that Palestinian citizens of Israel, those the Israeli government declared Arab, 
right? Like, is so different than the way that Israeli leftists and and uh, those who are... <clears throat> uh, the way that uh, if you are Jewish and a full-blown Israeli citizen, you can, you know, you can write articles, you can, you can be like Gideon Levy. I'm not sure, Hassan, we are dismissed as delusional in the best case or traitors usually. Well, that's the thing, though. But no, but hold on. But the question is this. Haaret still exists. Gideon Levy still writes there, right? It, even if you are a, a uh, someone who has renounced their own citizenship, like Ilan Pape, there's still, there isn't, uh, like, you don't go to jail. You don't get treated in the same way that a Palestinian citizen of Israel would for saying something much, much lighter than what Gideon Levy says, right? And I think it has to be, I think it has to be uh, from like the, the notion, the underlying notion that it's like, yeah, he can say it. He, ha he should be able to say it. We can't subject him to the same exact, we can't subject you to the same exact fucking uh, uh, conditions that we subject Palestinian citizens of Israel to because, you know, you're, you're still a Jew. Like you're still a part of the, the inner group. I've always thought it was interesting. Look at the case of Jonathan Pollack. You are both, you are right though. If I was not Jewish, I'd probably be in jail right now. Like, I feel like you have to go above and beyond in order to like actually uh, face repercussions. For example, um, for example, I think that, um, wait, what? So what happened to Jonathan Pollack is an Israeli activist and graphic designer who works for Haaretz. He co-founded the direct action anarchist against the wall. For Israeli and U.S. activists, demanding equality tends to mean raising others to our level of privilege. But how many are willing to relinquish that privilege? For the last years, while I and everyone I know was out in the streets for New York and Tel Aviv protesting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the screaming for democracy, my friend Jonathan Pollock was trapped under house arrest waiting for trial in Israel. He was arrested by the Israeli border police during a demonstration against the illegal settlement outpost of Eviatar in the occupied West Bank. Eviatar was first built in 2021, largely on land owned by Palestinians from the town of Beta whose residents have lived there since long before the state of Israel was founded. No, it's not a okay, not okay. That doesn't... Ch chatter. This literally does not work in Israel, okay? This is so funny. Everyone always fucking goes for this, but this unironically does not work in Israel. Our analysis of, of uh, Israel's right to exist might be uh, shrouded by what we perceive is like this. We put Arabs in this category, and then we think like, well, our... Ashkenazi neighbors are, are maybe here, but the reality is Israel is this. Israel and Palestine, Palestinians and Israelis are indistinguishable from one another. Indistinguishable. There are white Palestinians, just like there are Ashkenazi Jews, but then there is also a shit ton, significantly more Arab Jews. The irony always is that like uh, some of the Ashkenazi at the very least are like uh, trying, <laughs> are perceived as more moderate. Anyway, so what happened? He, the outpost was temporarily evacuated back into the government. At least active participation in far-right ministers. At least nine Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces. Yonatan was held in detention for several weeks and released a house arrest. I mean, didn't they, always, didn't they literally shoot at another uh, Israeli Jew uh, in the West Bank, like settlers did, as uh, some of the activists uh, put their bodies in front of the, the uh the Palestinian villages that they were trying to destroy. This happened like last week, I think. They're getting way too fucking out of hand. I mean, they're getting way too comfortable, but why shouldn't they? Ethiopian Jews, Ethiopian Jews are mistreated because Israel has had a, a, um, a whiteness complex for sure. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but you have to remember what the demographics look like. Not from... Israel's own perspective, which is a distinction that they make between Arab and Jew, which is not a real distinction. It's not a fucking real distinction. It's one that only a Jewish ethnostate could make. Why? Because there is a there are millions of Arab Jews. They're just like, all right, well, they're they're Mizrahi, uh, so it's different. No, they're Arab. They're from Arab countries. They're Arab. They're Arab Jews. The reason why they eat hummus is not because they're Jewish. The reason why they eat hummus is because they're Arab. Okay? Like, the fuck? You think, you think motherfuckers coming from Germany was like, oh, I love hummus and fucking falafel? No, where did it come from? Anyway, I will never condemn hummus, okay? Hummus is fucking, I'm eating hummus right now. Only Sabra hummus. But he's stealing a base. 
and he's using he's starting with this analogy in order to justify homicidal mass murder and what i would say to him even though i am younger and i know that he is a scholar he's written all these books is that i wish he would evaluate the fact that he cannot bring himself to simply understand that hamas are the 21st century nazis not oh! israel but i make bad analogies well, they mm -hmm. are. If I invoke, they do what they do. I, what the I, Nazis do I, is just kill the I, Jews. If I invoke the Nazis, it's outrageous. Bro, 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 bro. That's why I always say the comparison between fucking Hamas and Nazis is not one that benefits a Zionist, because very quickly you will recognize one is the one that the one the state the state that has a supremacist fascist ideology and is like mechanically doing mass murder is not fucking Hamas, not the Palestinians. That's insane. Outrageous. Well, no, but when I, it, he invokes the Nazis, that's permissible. Well, no, no, I'm basing it on what they do mm -hmm. as opposed to right. and my actually, inner demons actually, or whatever. That's I'm exactly thinking. what I did. I based my comment on what they do. Well, I think locking okay. people in a, 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 a camp for 20 years where you can't go in, can't go out, no food, for a, full, for a full stomach, one half the population suffers from extreme food insecurity. And now, as we speak, exactly at this moment, fuel is not being admitted, which means the hospitals collapse and the water supply. So why doesn't Hamas okay. give them some uh, of their uh, fuel? Uh, uh, you yeah, know, why, 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 you know, because they have to kill more Jews? Okay, uh, Perio, first of all, you don't know that Hamas is not giving the fuel. That's what Israel says, but, but. But if they are, then okay, what's the problem? Okay, but I am not going by what I know personally. I'm reading the human rights reports, and the human rights reports, as we speak, Fire. They're coming. They're anti-Semitic. So there are a lot of people. This is their first. This is their first ever like iteration of an ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign that has continued for a very long time. So this is probably the first time that they get to experience like uh, a, a rabid defender of Israel. But given the seventy-five years of of arrogance that has that has been built up as a consequence of consistently getting exactly, like Israel, getting exactly what it wants from American foreign policy, unlimited funds, and also um, widespread justifications for their actions. A lot of defenders of Israel will openly just be like, yeah, Human Rights Watch is anti-Semitic. They're actually bad. They're also bad. The Geneva Conventions are anti-Semitic. Like, I think that's very off-putting. I mean, I personally think that that's like morally repugnant, obviously, but I definitely think that comes across as very off-putting and arrogant to like, the average person, right? If you're an average person, you're like, I don't get it. Like, what? Why are they bombing children? You're like, oh, they're, they're fucking human shields. And then, and then you say, well, I, I don't understand. Like, the Human Rights Watch says it's apartheid state. Well, I, that's anti-Semitic. Human Rights Watch is anti-Semitic. You're gonna be like, the fuck? What is happening here? Like, what am I? What am I hearing from someone whom I've cherished for years? Someone whom I've uh, I've I've found close to myself? Someone who I thought was uh, a, of a similar mind. Like, what happened? What happened that now this person who I thought was a liberal is, is saying such, is engaging in such, like, bloodthirsty zealotry? And I think that that will come across as certainly off-putting to a lot of people who just, like, kind of look at the situation and, and can cut through the propaganda that, like, you know, Islamist Arab dogs are bloodthirsty and violent. Coming out on a daily basis, if the fuel is... Who are you talking about? Do tell us. I have a, a, a shit ton of... I have a shit ton of, like, Jewish normie friends who are... who are pretty progressive. I wouldn't say, like, completely progressive, but, like, normies that are understanding. You know what I mean? Normies that, like, look to me and go, ha-ha, you're the woke guy. Right? Like, and, and, and I think like in this last, uh, last 
couple weeks of coverage, like their perspective has shifted from like, oh, you're the woke guy to like, I feel like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're Hamasabi. I feel like you're a uh, Hamasabi. You know, you really love Hamas, huh? Like, is that what's going on? You really love Hamas? And it, and it makes me sad because like, I know that there are a lot of kind people. Why do they do that? What do you mean? Indoctrination, man. What the fuck do you think it is? Bro, none of your normie friends have said that you're Hamasabi. No shot. Well, there's one that does say that, but that's besides the point. Anyway, well, there's a couple that jokingly say it, but I feel like it's not a joke. I feel like it's like serious. There's like a, like a level of seriousness behind it. And it kind of hurts my soul a little bit every time I hang out and every time I like, uh, you know, try to talk to them and stuff. But who, why the fuck would I tell you anything about who I know in my, in my normie sphere of friends? Why would I ever in a million years reveal that information to you fucking roving gang of freakazoids? Get the fuck out of here. Shut the fuck up. Is not admitted, the hospitals will not function and the water will not be drinkable in Gaza. Okay? That's what the human rights organizations are saying. Okay, okay. We're, we're, not, we're, we're repeating ourselves. It's now. not about, <laughs> at this moment, it's not about Hamas. It's very convenient, and I'm not saying you're doing it on purpose. She does do it on purpose. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> it's very convenient I, I gotta make a point. to home in on Gaza. I'm talking about, I'm home in on Hamas. I'm talking about the 2.3 million people. 2%, 2% of the food that they normally get, which means normally... It's extreme food and 2% is being, get, uh, being admitted. Water is drying up. Hospitals are becoming dysfunctional. Now that to me is a murder plan. You may not like to hear it. Okay, sir. But sir. de facto, it's a murder sir. plan. It's a death Professor sentence Fengelson. for the people of Gaza. I'll say, and then we'll finish. First of mm -hmm. all, I'm not, I've said this before, I'm not ready to sign on the dotted line for what Israel is going to to do oh. i am giving them the oh that's my favorite look i also hate benjamin netanyahu but here's why everything he said and done is actually perfectly morally and legally permissible my answer i will use one word hamas i rest my case there it is there's many different kinds of zionisms out there but Ultimately, given that it is a supremacist ethno-state project, it almost always revolves around, well, you know, what are you going to do? you got to be a little violent with these animals, okay? Historically speaking, there were moments where I think, like, there, there are different iterations, I'm sure. But when push comes to shove, even the soft Zionism of J Street which is supposed to be a counter to APAC's uh, hard right influence on American politics. Jay Street is supposed to be liberal. They sent out a fucking memo to every Democrat saying you have to do an unconditional support for Israel bill or else we'll never fund you again. They went back on it. They went back on it only because some of my friends, like literally my friends, in, uh, my friends that I've had on the stream had to go back and talk to the, the current uh, J Street people to be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? The benefit of the doubt, and I'll predict here today that Israel is not going to starve Gazans to death. But if they do, I will say Finkelstein was right, I was wrong, and this is this is a, a, a sh oh dude, you'll say that? Oh well, then then it's okay to fucking posture like that right now. Shame that the Jewish people committed. I don't believe that's going to happen. I. Wonder if you really think it's going to happen, but there's a lot of bluster and bluffing and and hard fucking nose actions that that people take in wartime. I want to say the following about the Nazis. Conclusory, you know, comparing things to things is is a is a tool. It's a strategy of advocacy to compare something to the Nazis is a very powerful way to win an argument. 
All I would say is that if you were to compare factually what you've described mm -hmm. as a concentration camp in Gaza, and then I were to list factually to somebody who never heard the word concentration camp, what it meant to be a concentration camp in, in, in Germany, they would never think of using the same word to describe them both. No, with all, with all you, you, can, you can you can find some. Mr. But, but the, no, the, it, to, a concentration camp implies mass murder. No, that's a death camp. Uh, okay, but that's what well, I understand. There's Bergen, war camps. Yeah, there's war camps and death camps. Bergen Belsen right. was a concentration camp. But you know camp. as well as I do that uh, the general public the doesn't, the doesn't Jap make the that Jap The Japanese what we call them internment camps. They were concentration camps. Yes, but you know, and, that, you know and, that people don't make that, that fine distinction in, in, in everyday life. And I, I, That's my favorite. I've heard this too from friends who know I'm not anti-Semitic, who know that I have fought against anti-Semitism and find it to be morally repugnant and abhorrent, who say, well, you're not, but you're breeding anti-Semitism by calling out uh, Israel's war crimes. And I'm like, dog, you can't say that. That's ridiculous. And he knows full well that he's in the wrong here against a scholar. So he turns around and goes, oh, well, technically you're making that distinction specifically so people invoke a different feeling. That's an entirely separate argument. And I don't know the details of the work camps, mm -hmm. but... Um, when you tell people it's a concentration camp, mm -hmm. I'm I not believe you know this. You know how ignorant people are. They assume you're comparing it to the worst of Germany. I'm quoting Baruch Kimmerling. All right. Well, that's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, he found one. All right. um, actually, you want a second? You have another? You got another oh, yeah, human I rights report? I actually, the Gaza I Ministry of no, Health, because no, they call no. it that too? I would suspect that you know, you would know Amira Haas. Yeah, I do know Amira Haas. Okay. And Amira Haas's I'm parents were in the were in the camps in World War II. Okay. And she once had to wrestle with that question. And if you're interested, since he said you want to do research after, just Google Amira Haas concentration camp Gaza. She lived there to her eternal credit. She lived there and she wrote a book drinking. Uh, okay. I, I, I am interested, but of course, everybody, everybody can pick yeah. somebody. Yeah esteemed well, who, who agrees yeah. with them so it's right. not it's not a so, evidence yeah, but it's not like you're it's, pulling it's, the question is what's what? oh wait what wait i'm sorry what oh dude <laughs> not an argument <clears throat> this person who lived in gaza who knows full well what the concentration camp situation was like compares it well you can't do that uh, well okay who am i supposed to rely on then you your opinions the fuck what are you saying if a fucking formative scholar on the history on Israeli history on Palestinian history is not a good person to rely on in this matter and you don't think that the other scholars that he is deploying in this argument are not a good person to rely on in this matter what is it it's just your opinion versus like all the scholars that he brought up how do you 3v1 a motherfucker and still get absolutely eviscerated it's not what something her, like her your arguments point, are. Yeah. Argument, Fine, that's yeah, why I said yeah, 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 okay. Google it yeah. because okay. Amira, I don't always agree with her, but number one, Amira is a stickler for facts like myself, and she's a political person. All right. And if you read her statements since October 7th, in general, in general, they've been excellent. All right. They've been excellent. And she was careful to say, I have friends who've looked into it there were significant atrocities that occurred on October 7th. I defer to her judgment. I know she's not a propagandist, but she was also very careful okay. not to blame okay. the people of Gaza people, for what people, happened. Okay, Professor, thank you very, very much. See, he used the term correctly, propagandist. Scholars are not propagandists. They can be, okay? But a propagandist and a scholar are very different. Remember that. I am a propagandist. I, however, rely on scholars to make an assessment on a situation, to build my perspective, to understand. Like, I look at a situation and I think, this smells a little weird. And you are terrible at it, lol. Got him!
fucking got him, dude. Amira Haas is the uh, last scholar that he used. What is this? You have to make them read this chart if you... <laughs> what? If they want to make that argument? What the... F I think this just broke my brain. I've heard this guy on True Not a ton, but I've never seen him. He's pretty good at good looking, not gonna lie. Norm? Norm is a daddy, dude. It makes me kind of sad to see like uh his his you know takes on contemporary politics, but he he does kind of feel he's been a legend on this issue. This is a man who's dedicated his entire fucking life. He's a I see a lot of I'm a very stubborn person. I'm a very stubborn person, and I have a profound amount of respect for people. Who just go, nope, don't care. Don't give a fuck what you do to me. This is the truth. I know it's the fucking truth. And I will defend it unconditionally. And, and you know, can bring a lot of facts to the table as well. And while Norm certainly, I think, due to his background, due to his personal relationship with literally these atrocities, specifically uh, the, the Holocaust, his parents are survivors, right? Um, ha can Can say a lot of... He can say a lot of stuff that I, I think maybe even goes above and beyond when, in his criticisms.